Hello and welcome to Antique Needle Workers. I'm Shelly and this is my channel about cross stitch and all my crafty endeavors and I'm so glad that you have joined me here today. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. I hope you find something here today that inspires you and encourages your creative bug. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much for coming time and time again. I appreciate you so much. So, wow, guys, it's been three weeks. I apologize for that. Um, I had Nashville Need a Work Market in there. And then last week when I got home, it was uh, just a big week. There was a lot going on here. I had a baby group meeting. I was supposed to go to Guild, but I had to pick and choose. You know how that goes. And my husband, his um, hobby is slot car racing. And he had a regional race here on his big track back in the big garage. And so he had a house full of people back there. And so it was just busy, busy, busy. It required a daughter's help and everything for the week to go through, but it was phenomenal. So anyway, that has... Um, been a little bit of what I've been doing and um, I wrote a list because I, I I'm just gonna tell you go get yourself something to drink it's gonna be a big one friends it is all over all around here although I was at Nashville Needlework Market and the entire time I was there I stitched one morning for 30 minutes and Carrie knitted for 30 minutes that's all we did from Wednesday to Sunday I still got an amazing amount of things done. I have, y'all have just overwhelmed me with kindness. When I show you, I have so much happy mail, so many cards, so much sweetness sent my way um, that we're gonna go through. Um, I have stuff that's haul haul. I have stuff that is haul from <laughs> Nashville. And then yesterday, um, well, actually last evening, on my uh, Facebook uh, page, um, Antique Needle Workers Circle of Friends, if you haven't heard about that, it's a private group for all of the people who follow me. And um, it's a great community. It's pushing now. It, we started about a little under a month ago, and there's almost 2,000 people in there. And it's so lively with wonderful conversation. It is quite a community. I am just so um, thrilled at how everyone has connected so well. It also is a place for you to go to find out and be a part of my um, Zoom stitch-ins with me. Um, we actually um, had a Zoom stitch-in and it was wonderful. Every uh, person that came was just so uh, lively and fun. I was so encouraged. Um, I was a little nervous. I've participated in many Zooms, but I've never administrated one. And I knew that there would be an awful lot of people and I was a little nervous. So a few of my floss tube friends and a few good friends, they let me use them as guinea pigs and I practiced and um, they had got me all ready and not nervous and that was such a wonderful experience. I got feedback from several people and they said it's um, that they felt like they were truly sitting in a circle of friends and that is actually what my heart was for it. And that is what bred the, the Facebook group. And so um, if you wanna be a part of that community, um, head over to Facebook and look up um, Antique Needle Workers Circle of Friends and you'll have to answer two questions and agree to the rules. Please do that. I do, if you are watching and you have put in to be part of the group and you haven't seen anything, it's because you haven't answered the questions. So go back and answer the questions and agree to the rules and you will be approved for entrance. And it is just, you guys have blessed my socks off. And that is where you will find out everything you need to know about when the Zooms are, because you have to be a part of group, the group to be part of the Zoom. And so we're, I'm planning at least once a month to do our um, Zoom stitch togethers. And um, if there's anything else, you'll find out there on the group. But back to what I was talking about. Within the group last night, we had um, a, a sweet contributor named Nana ask some questions about silk. 
And so along with all the other things that I'm going to show you today, we're going to have a little talk about silk and I'm really excited because we all know I'm a study nerd and I'm also a fiber artist so I don't just stitch I weave I spin um, as a matter of fact um, I have spun my own thread and stitched it and showed it on here and um, quilt crochet knit if it's a fiber art I am part of it I have done them uh, pretty much most of my adult life I sew quilt all the above but anyway um, I love learning about the tools. I love learning about the fibers and all of those things. And so I don't claim to know everything and I don't claim to be an expert. But when Nana asked that question last night and then people began to chime in, I was like, hey, I'm doing a floss tube tomorrow. How about we just have a chit chat about some silk and maybe it'll answer some questions. But at least one thing's for sure, you'll get to see some silk because I went over here to my silk cabinet and I pulled out quite a few of the different um, manufacturers of it. And so we'll talk about their qualities and their cost and maybe you'll feel a little bit more comfortable about that. So, but here's my trusty dusty list on old school paper. And so let me just tell you my agenda so that I can keep myself in line because I have so much prepared for today. I am dead serious. This is going to be a feature length film. So really get the biggest mug of tea, uh, get yourself a snack, get your stitching, put your feet up because we're going to hang out for a while. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to catch up about the things I've been doing, and I've already started that. Um, I'm going to talk about market, and I'm actually going to show you the items right there that I got at market so I can split the haul so that you know what came from market and what was just my generalized haul. Then I'm going to show you my whips and my finishes and my fully finishes because I got a bunch. I'm excited. Um, I'm then going to show you my haul. And then we're going to have our discussion on silks. And then I will um, announce the giveaways um, from last time. And I will show you the giveaways for this time. And that should wrap up what we do. So, all right. With that being said, let's skedaddle right along. Okay. Oh, and I want to... Um, Okay, and in this section right here where I talk about marketing and all that, I think let's we should do Happy Mail right there because if not, I just almost passed it up. Okay, so on to Happy Mail. I have so many beautiful things, so many beautiful cards. I just want to tell you that across the room, I cleaned out my desk the other day because I've been collecting all the cards that you have been sending. I have a ginormous bin and I just can't, I've kept every single one of them and I go back and I read them and you bless me over and over again. If you've ever watched Molly and Kathy on Linen and Scraps, recently Molly taught Kathy to make, um, paper craft tags and use ephemera and things like that. She bought a Big Shot. I have a Big Shot Pro over here, which is a die cutter, tons and tons of dies. I think that I'm going to um, try to make some of those. There are tags that are like this big and she put them in this beautiful box and you take them out. And I think hers were done by the month, if I remember correctly. But I want to do little vignettes on these little cards so I can take them out, maybe decorate with them. And I want to cut pieces of the cards. Maybe even some of your sweet words and make those tags. If you haven't seen that video, run over to um, Linen and Scraps. I think it, it was like two videos ago. But um, anyway, I thought that was a tremendous idea. Thank you, Molly girl. You know I love you. you I'm your fan girl. And um, I think I'm going to borrow her idea. And I want to make some beautiful things with your beautiful words and your beautiful cards. So know this, that when you send me something, it means the world to me. And I have kept it. And I, I have bundles over here. I couldn't even believe it when I went to the B.O. box. Okay, so the first thing I'll show you is I got a card. Many thanks. And this was from uh, Janetta Derringer. And she just sent me a sweet, sweet card. But look what she put inside. She crocheted this. And I think this would be a beautiful spool flower for one of my antique sewing machines. So I think that's what I'm going to use. And then look at this. She did a little heart. 
and I think that this would be so sweet hanging off of a drum or something like that. So thank you, Janetta. I am definitely using these, and I appreciate your kind words and your encouragement in your card. Another card, I got a precious card from one of my favorite people, Ginger Shaw. Thank you so much, Ginger. It just blessed my heart. Thank you for your sweet words. They just touched my day. You know I love hearing anything from you. She is so inspiring, so, so inspiring. And then I got a card from Naomi Ingram, and it was a little Happy Bee card. It was one of Lori Holt's cards. They're precious, and in there she sent me my favorite pony needles. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Your words, of course, I touched my heart as well, Naomi. I thank you so much. And then I got this beautiful little card. And this card came to me, um, and um, it was from a sweet viewer named Jackie Alstrom. And Jackie, um, she wanted to celebrate my one year anniversary on Floss Tube. And she, I mean, every bit of this card, her sweet, kind words but she wanted to celebrate our, us together because she started stitching last year at the same time as this was started. And I can't even believe what she chose. She chose, consider the lilies. Yeah, consider the lilies. And um, she did it on 40 count <laughs> and she finished it in November. That is a monotonous, ginormous, holy mackerel first piece of cross stitch. And so she just talked about how she loved to watch um, and how she learned and she learned designer names and how Instagram and is such an inspiration. And um, she's been an amateur and a professional artist for most of her life. And um, so anyway, it was just so sweet and happy stitching anniversary to you my friend Jackie she's Jack's and that's with two x's 444 on Instagram so as a way to celebrate she made me some things she took a cap off of an acorn and made me an acorn pin cushion that's velvet is this not beautiful and to go with it she did some wool work and made me a needle book and I appreciate this so much what a treasure I kept it in the box now I'm so excited because I can't wait to put this out and display it here in my sewing room and use it but I love it isn't that just precious thank you so much and happy anniversary to you as well my friend I appreciate you and I appreciate your kind gift then I got a package from Kim King. I mean, you guys are just the most phenomenal people. So she wanted to do random acts of kindness, which I think is fantastic because, you know, that's my word for the year. And it's so funny since I picked it. I just tell you right now, the Lord just keeps putting kindness all around me, whether it's in print, whether it's in gifts, whether it's in charts. I have a big, beautiful thing I'm going to show you back here that I found. And I, I'm just, it, friendship and kindness. That was the, the, um, the premise of her gift. She used her embroidery sewing machine and she made this. And watch. There's a piece of candy in it. <laughs> Is that not neat? I just love it. And there's another use for this, and it's in the card she sent me um, for um, when I eat the chocolate. I even saved it. That, that's some sincere willpower because um, I wanted to eat it. This beautiful Valentine's ephemera. Then she sewed me a um, pack for my for tissues which is wonderful because I'm always tearing up in church that's so good thank you and then she made this it's a, I think it's a mug rug actually because I think that I have a pattern like this for my embroidery machine but it also can hold some things in the back and what it says on here stitching keeps me from from unraveling 
and I absolutely love this. And uh, then here's the sweet card. Let me do find out what the other thing that you can do with that. The Hershey Nugget can be replaced with a Selkie, uh, a Sulky or a 103 Silk. That's what it was. So this is kind. This can be a koozie for your 103. That'd keep it from unraveling. Isn't that great? And so, and then also in this little bag, um, this is she knit. If you can see in the knitting, there's a cross, and this is a pro, a pocket prayer square that she sent to me. And I thank you so much. That was so kind of you to knit that for me. I appreciate you so much, and in your kind gift. It exudes a random act of extreme kindness. Thank you so, so much. Then, I, I'm telling you, it just is, it's going to keep coming. I got a, um, I got a package from June Wood, and she had this quilt pattern, and she said it made her think of me. And I look at it, and I absolutely love this, because every single square has a different form of needlework, and it goes from embroidery to quilting to quilting bees to knitting to um, uh, sewing in a sewing machine, spinning, dressmaking, all the above. And she said this reminded her of me. And I am just honored that you thought that. And I really do want to make this. And so she sent me this pattern. Then she sent me some patterns as well that I could share with you or keep for myself. I am going to share them with you, but I am going to stitch one first because, again, kindness. Kind words never die, she sent from Beth Twist. I'm going to stitch this, then I am going to pass it to you. So if you don't mind, I'm going to borrow it first. But then she also sent um, Dirtle Dress Shop, which is a quilt pattern, and it has vintage dresses on it. And then she sent another um, wool and cotton applique um, pattern, and it is called Summer Clematis. And so in a future giveaway, these will be coming your way. And June, I thank you so much. Thank you for thinking of me and for sending that kind gift. That was so very precious um, to receive it. And she was so worried because I didn't get it. And I went to the PO and... I didn't see anything in there, and that was a big thing. They had put a key in the back of the P.O. box so that I would go to a bigger box, because that's what they do. If it's too big for your box, they put a box for a bigger box, and then you go over there. It was in the very back, and I didn't see it. So with her call and uh, her uh, email and reminder, I ran up, and by goodness, there it was. Okay, we're still going. <laughs> Lady Huzzah presents my sweet friend Lisa Duffin sent this precious, precious, sweet gift. Uh, but uh, she put together this little sweet thing for me. Just wanted to remember me and, and send something kind my way. It's got again. I can't wait. Today's the day. Chocolate. There's chocolate in here. But she took this little teddy and made a, a wool heart and then made some counting pins for me. Is he not adorable? I love him. He's going right over here on my, um, on my, um, my boxes over here. And um, from, um, ugh, I'm having him. Um, Saju, I wanted to say a Verisois. I've got the silk on the mind. Saju. I'm going to put this over here on my Saju boxes. I love him. Isn't he precious? Thank you, Lisa, my sweet friend. She is coming into town with her friend Stacy for um, uh, Stitch Con, and she's going to sit with Carrie and I, and I am so excited to meet her friend and get to spend more time with my sweet friend, um, Miss Lisa. Okay, so there's still more. This box came from my very dear friend who I met at um, Amana, and her name is Christy Fear. And again, kindness is surrounding me in the greatest of ways. She sent me, uh, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another. It's a, um, it's a tumbler so that I can take a cold or a hot drink. Thank you. 
Doesn't stop there. Precious, precious, sweet card with butterflies. I love that y'all in, uh, indulge me in my butterfly love. Then she brought, bought me some of these, um, these little um, stickers that I can stick, and it says kindness is contagious. Kind words can uh, are, are like so cool. Be known for your kindness and grace. Kill them with kindness. So it uh, is these, and they are so neat. I love them. Just can't believe all the sweet love sent my way. Then there is a bag of goodies and a free butterfly chart, which I'm gonna just go like that. And then the Piesta de Resistance. She bought me the t-shirt that matches my tumbler. Thank you, Christy. I love you so much. She is just precious and we have just become the sweetest friends and I love seeing her at retreat. I'm gonna be sad because I won't be in Amana for spring or fall because I have two other retreats that happen to fall the availability came up and anyway, we still see each other. She's part of my group and I really enjoy her. So goodness gracious, happy, happy, happy mail. So that is all the happy mail. Okay, now let's move on to uh, talking about um, Nashville. Nashville was amazing. Um, what an absolute privilege to have been there. Uh, my dear precious friend Carrie, who we all know is Carrie Tiger Lily's designs, um, uh, she to me lovingly is a ray of sunshine. Um, I just say that she is, she's a walking rainbow of goodness. And um, she needed a little help and I went to Nashville because for her subscription box, she was looking for some very unique items that would um, make the boxes extra special. And you know as well as I do, I mean, Carrie, she puts together the most, the best box out there, I think. I cannot brag on her enough, her hard work. I mean, you know, you have to set an appointment to make a phone call because she is busy, busy, busy with those keepers. But anyway, we went down there and um, we did it. We huffed every single room, got to see some wonderful friends, but even the best uh, was that um, she was able to find several things that you are just going to love in your boxes. I'm going to love in my box. I got a little sneaky peeky. So, but anyway, um, and we made some great connections. That was a wonderful thing too. Um, we did pick up some things and I'm going to show you. I, I bought some charts and, um, but uh, we helped my sweet friend, our sweet friend, Sylvia. It was so fun to be part of her setup crew and help her set up her beautiful space and um, just be there for her and we just love being a cheerleader for all of these wonderful people who work so hard all year long to bring such wonderful things um, I must ring the bell of Annie the proper stitcher she is just precious and I just was so proud of her and her hard work this year um, it was her first Nashville needlework market and of course I've never been so all I can tell you is is um, she held the standard and um, she did great. I was just so proud of her. Um, just love, love, love Rebecca and Beth from My Sister Sampler. Uh, their offerings were just amazing. Um, Liz Matthews, her mother Kathy Barrick, my sweet dear friend Ray Niles from Red Barn Samplers. Oh my goodness. Precious, precious, precious Teresa Kogut. I mean, the list just wanes on and on. Sweet Wings Studio. I mean, all the dyers, all of the thread people, just all of the people that made this event up. It was just amazing and so neat to see. But when I walked through there, you know, um, my husband being a business owner for the entirety of his life, um, just I know the hard work that was put into it and they all just smashed it out of the park. So I will show you a few things. The first thing I want to talk about is a connection that I made. 
old colonial designs. They make beautiful boxes. If you've ever seen Jeanette Douglas's box that's called My Stitching Treasures, that is set onto an old colonial box. And this is what you'll see when you went in their booth. But the, 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 the boxes were there. And I got to meet the owner and his wife, um, who his name is Adam, and his wife designs. And they were just so pumped and so precious. Got to see a, a brand new box that was only two weeks new and fell in love with it. And you're gonna hear me talk later on this year about old colonial designs because I got a plan for something I'm gonna do in that box. And so I am really excited about it. Um, all I can say to you is, is the quality of their um, workmanship is amazing and um, just was very excited to go in there and meet them. And so I really enjoyed that. And I and you're going to benefit later in the year because I'm going to do, I, I can't wait. I've got a project I want to put in one of their boxes. And so I'm really excited. So you're going to hear me talk about them again later on this year. And actually, I haven't done it yet, but I'll just say it here. I think that later on this year when I um, do my project and prepare to put it in that box, um, I think I'm going to invite Adam and his wife to come on live in the Facebook group. And that way, maybe they could do some show and tell and maybe, you know, you could ask them some questions. But it, I, they were just a wonderful, wonderful couple, and they're just such quality. Um, you know, it, they're heirloom pieces, and so I loved everything about that. And it was just so neat to see something that was two weeks new. Um, no one had seen it, I don't believe, before market. So that was really, really neat. So I enjoyed that so much. Went into uh, Needlework Press, and it is like a French, uh, you know, um, mercantile in there because they had so many um things and i i was just so drawn to these i got these i was sucked in by all the silk ribbon just so wonderful and then um this is antique fabric and i've already pulled a piece because i fully finished one of my um finishes with a piece off of the fabric but would you look there even was a piece of um cross stitching on the top we <laughs> is what that says in French. So these are old antique fabrics that I got from them just to do some finishing. So those are the things that I got from Needlework Press. And then I'll show you some charts. I went to Stacy Nash's room and I am so sad because I left in the main house. Her daughter Taylor is making lotion bars. They're like a solid um, lotion and you rub it on your hands and oh oh my gosh I got the calla lily one they're phenomenal she's not only doing her um, waxers she's doing candles and she's doing um, the lotions and oh we just loved it but I stopped specifically in there um, with my own want list and I bought the crackers I bought bobbin and I bought Maggie May. The lighting is terrible. Sorry, Maggie May. And I also bought uh, Miss Hazel. Is she not adorbs? And that's not the last of those. I bought two more. I bought two sets of these more to give to you. So those are in today's giveaway. So I bought three sets of these. So two for you. I'm not leaving you out. You've got to have a little market too. And then in my sweet Miss Sylvia, running with needles and scissors uh, as a gift to Carrie and I, she said, go pick whatever you want. And so, because she wanted to thank us. And so I got her big, big, big girl that's 404 by 404 HW 1852. And she is a beauty in person. And uh, right here is Prince Albert and that is Queen Victoria. And that is a wonderful story. If you go to Running With Needles and Scissors and watch her market preview, she tells the great story of all about this stampler. And then um, we got, I, I got Note of Love, uh, Hannah Rome. This little sampler is just gorgeous. You, you know, these, these patterns, they just, nothing 
is like seeing the model. And I have the Victoria Clayton silks on the way for this. So anyway, um, and I found a piece of red fabric and it's all prepared and waiting over on the table because I want to stitch that ASAP. And then, uh, okay, I don't know when that turned off because you know, it turns off at about 20 minutes. I guess it's a battery saving mechanism. I don't know. Maybe I need to find where I need to turn that off. Anyway, maybe if you did not see this, this is Hannah Rome. This was the other piece that I got from Sylvia. Then I went into my sister sampler. Boy, those girls, Rebecca, Beth, they are amazing. Beth is the dyer for Gloriana Silks. They are just the sweetest ladies and they had such beautiful offerings and I fell in love with Catherine Terry and I got her. So beautiful and it's so bubbly and bright. With stitching um, Ann Richardson for um, Carrie's birthday, those beautiful bright pink flowers. Oh, I, maybe it's because I have the summer, the winter doldrums too. It's just like it was a, a, a just a, a wonderful shot of sunshine, and I just loved the bright colors from that. Another thing that I fell deeply in love with is they are doing little letters, uh, the first in a series of miniature sampler reproductions, and they had these kits. And inside the kit, you got the pattern, the fabric, the thread, the Gloriana silk on bobbins. I love this. Something I should have told you was I, I wrote another article again for the Queen City Sampler Guild, and it was all on antique bobbins, which took me on a trail of study that I learned a whole lot about um, the production of thread because you had to learn that to understand why the winders came out so i appreciated so much these little winders that came that the thread came on on the next video i'll tell you all about that you also got um, a, a needle minder a little tiny sampler you got your needle you got you a waxer and um so and on this you stitch the little sampler one over one so uh, it's the model fabric is 45 count foxtail millet by legacy linens that's this one stitch the full crosses using one strand okay so okay so part of this is over two and part of it's over one and then it makes this teeny tiny little sampler. But it's everything you need. And it's just so adorably put together. And um, I loved, love, love that. The idea of this tiny little miniature sampler. So I had to buy that. And then right next door, one moment please. The allergies have been really bad and I took a Claritin D and I'm talking and now mm, I'm dry. That wasn't a good move. knowing that you were going to sit and talk for all this time and do a world tour. Mm -mm, Claire's and D doesn't work really well. With that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So then next door was my sweet friend, Ray Niles. And boy, did she have some pretty offerings. I have to tell you one of the things I have some books and I'm gonna have to tell you about that on, on the next time. Uh, but I've, I've been studying a couple books on Irish samplers, and I love the Irish alphabets. And, of course, when I saw this, I just fell totally in love with it because it immediately, there is that A done in the Irish font. And this is Yuri C. Fell, 1856. What a beauty. And I fell in love with that. And uh, then also Louisa March, Marsh, 1834. Beautiful. And then this is a little one and it's so beautiful. And it's Rachel Sellers, 1882. 
Love, love, love that. And I think that you could knock that out of the park really quick. And so that's beautiful. Oh, but oh, this Yuri C. Fell. I am in love with this alphabet. I am so drawn to that. And you know, my dad was adopted and um, I found my family. My dad died in 2007 in January and in March, which would have been this, this month, um, in March of 2007, I found my family, my, um, my dad's uh, birth family. And, um, and uh, my real, I, I guess my, my maiden name really is an alias because I'm really an Allen. And so uh, my daughter-in-law bought a DNA test for me because that way well, I'm trying to find out, are we Scottish or Irish? Um, it could have been a little bit of both. Um, my dad was born in the heart of Appalachia and you know the mountains were absolutely um, filled with the Irish and the Scottish and um, Alan could fall on either side of that line, could even be English. And so, but um, yeah, and so, and then I love the Irish font. So I'm like, yeah, I, I would have learned all I can about that. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now I gotta find out on daddy's side, Am I Irish or Scottish or both or, or none? I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, rabbit trail. Okay. Uh, another one which everybody loved was Gray Skill from Little Robin Designs. I picked that up. Is she a beauty? Look at those big cats. She's a beauty. I also picked up the brand new Prairie Schooler for 2024. I feel like I'm like ahead of the game for Christmas. Because, you know, I'm trying to keep some seasonal in and not be such a fuddy dud. Uh, I went into um, uh, to this room, Monticello Stitches, and I had never seen their designs before. And I love this pattern. It is beautiful flowers. It's got butterflies and birds. And it's love one another. Love one another so so beautiful in person uh, but I, that was a new one for me and so I had never seen them I went to my sweet friend Judy Whitman of course because every one of her offerings were so beautiful I bought her Renee's French alphabet I thought this would be a beautiful thing to do a monogram and maybe do uh, the F in the middle and then an S and a J for Jerry and myself and do that maybe on like a 28 count so that it would be big and then frame it and kind of hang that in the entryway. I, I don't know. We'll see. But I just thought that would be a neat idea. I love that. My heart to you is given this booklet as well. Flight of Fancy. Oh, the birds love 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 and then uh when cardinals appear this is a companion i think to the bluebirds that she did last year for stitch away i love cardinals i have a very dear friend named vicky in florida and her and i lost our daddies really near each other and every christmas um vicky and i send each other cardinals and it's become quite a thing where uh Let's see who can send the most cardinals or find, find the most original cardinal things. So I love that. So I have to stitch that. I think I might pull some motifs and she might just get a cardinal something off of that um, for her Christmas. So you can't buy that, Vicki. Okay. <laughs> I stopped in to see my friend Susan at Sweet Wing Studio. I love her so dearly. It just was so exciting. She is full time now she's quit her job and she's designing full blast and it was so exciting to see her i bought uh without ceasing love that i also bought harvest butterflies love that of course i bought the butterflies you know and then goodness and mercy when i was young i used to sing in a group at church and we used to sing, uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I can hear that. The minute I saw this, I could hear myself standing in my group 
singing in our little church when we first got married and uh, singing that song. I love, love, love that. Brought back some really good memories. And then the last two things I bought, I got the two new uh, Blackbird uh, books, Moments of Glad Grace. Love this. There's nothing Blackbird does that isn't perfect. It's just perfection. And then Thy, uh, thy Love More Strong. Okay, so those are all the things that I found at Market, and those are all the things that I did while I was there. We got to visit people, and, and we did do this little bit of shopping, but you know what? We were there to work, and we worked, and I had a great time. Uh, I did forget to show you one piece of, of kindness that was given to me, but it's in the right segment, I think. Um, when Carrie and I went down there, our favorite Alabama cousin, Miss Christy, had just celebrated a birthday and we decided we would celebrate her. So we took her a big bundle of flowers and got her some goodies because, you know, you need sweets or a cake. So, and then um, I made her something for her birthday, but she shows up with a gift for me and Carrie. I have put mine to good use, cousin, let me just say. So, oh, you'll hear the noise because it's heavy. She had stopped at the Amish and bought us these baskets. Can you believe this? And look, cousin, I've already got mine filled. This is the perfect behind the ba uh, couch basket. It is so large and hungry and holds it all and it doesn't look like a piled up wreck. And so that was another piece of kindness. I apologize, I forgot that. So that was something else we did we we sat down and we and we got to meet holly ho and we sat and just talked and talked and enjoyed and out oh, there is nothing like hugging your friend's neck when they're so from so far away so that was such a good visit and we enjoyed it and i uh i hope she had a good time at her birthday i think she did so that covers happy mail that covers um market and market hall and what i've been up to and now i think we'll move on to whips finishes and fully finishes okay i did forget to show you one more thing that i bought when i was at the antique mall i was referring to it i passed this and it says something so dear and i wanted it to hang in the stairway coming up to the studio but it says i shall pass this way but once therefore any good that i can do or any kindness that i can show let me do it now for i shall not pass this way again and you know what that is sincerely utterly the desire of my heart i want to do just that thing and i thought i have to have that so i bought that and i want to be reminded of it every time I walk up those steps over there. And so I did buy that in Nashville. Let me try to put this down. Oops, I hit the camera. Oops, little mistakes. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, now, okay, let me adjust the camera. I hit the tripod. <laughs> okay. Let's do whips. Okay, I have two whips because everything else is finished or fully finished. Okay, so since I saw you last, I worked some more on um, the Rose and the Giant Pear by Hats. Hands Across the Sea samplers. I am using all the called for DMC and I am stitching it on 36 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. And this is my progress. I have just a very little bit of the border to go. I have finished the house and the garden gate and the rose pot is in. So all I have to do is add the rose and then there's another motif and she will be done. So I've got her very close now and it has been a really fun stitch and this 
I am stitching. This was the birthday sow for Alicia, the fanciful flamingo. And so I, I'm chugging right along. That's very, very near to being done. I also worked on another birthday, and that was Carrie, my, my friend, Miss Tiger Lily Designs. I worked on my sister sampler, Ann Richardson. Is she not a beauty or what? And um, let's just uh, let's just show you all the gorgeousness. Okay, so Carrie's birthday is in January. This is the January Keeper Club Keeper. That's not all. If she wasn't fancy Nancy enough, she handmade each and every one a scissor case with these gorgeous scissors with the little dragonflies in them that match the fabric. I'm just saying, we're fancy. We're fancy all up here with the Carrie Tiger Lily. And so I'm using the um, called for silks from Victoria Clayton. And uh, I am stitching this on 36 count weeks corn silk and I'm about halfway done with page one and so I think I got a good bit done so considering how busy it was I think I still motored along and got a lot of stitching done so I love the fabric love everything about this the silks are wonderful and um, the patterns just great yep those those sisters did a great job at my sister sampler love 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 this so that's motoring right along. And so those are my two whips. I have a whip that's not stitching related, but I'm gonna show you my two sti non-stitching related things last. So let's go to my finishes. I did show this on my um, social media, but I finished Anna Morgan by um, Scattered Seed Sampler, Anna Morgan, 1845. I fell so in love with her. She's adorable. I have done this to honor my mother-in-law. I have put DF in place of um, Anna's initials, and I put 1947 because that's when my mother-in-law was done, born. Um, I stitched this with um, the uh, a flower thread conversion that Brenda, the serial star, Brenda, and the serial starter, Brenda from there. She gave um, the conversion for this and um, I love it. As a matter of fact, you're gonna see how much I love the flower threads in just about a minute. But I will tell you, I changed it a little more even than what um, Brenda did. My mother-in-law is a blonde haired, blue eyed woman. And so if you notice, I do not have a dark haired girl. I have a blonde, haired, blue-eyed lady, because she represents my mother-in-law. And funny story, the two little dogs in the grass, can you see those? This was absolutely the perfect thing to finish in honor of my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law lives on a country lane. She owns the whole left side of the road. And for my husband's entire life, anybody who wanted to ditch their dog, ditched them at the end of their road. And um, so they had a herd of dogs his whole life, and she's been a dog lover and instilled it in everyone else. So this was the perfect thing, and I am so pleased with her, and she was so fun to stitch. Love, love, love that so much. So she's ready to go to the framers. So I finished that. That was a finish. And I, I will say my tally for the year this is in my um, stitchers planner. I, including that and the finishes over here, I, since January, have finished 15 projects. And so I am thinking that is wonderful. And I love this place where I can put, it. you can put your whips, new starts, plans is what it says, and under it I put finishes because I don't reflect and go back and go over those. But I'm going to use these pages, because there's several pages, and I am going to, I think this is gonna be really fun at the end of the year to go back and maybe do a finished parade, which I've never done. 
And so it's been great. And plus it's, it's showing me my progress from January to now. So I'm pl pretty pleased with that. One of the things I will say is as I have been doing bigger pieces, I'm loving doing small pieces alongside of them. Um, it takes the big project fatigue away because you get a small accomplishment. And so I'm loving adding small things in instead of the monotony of tons of big pieces because you can fall into that puddle of um, dismay kind of because when everything's so big and you don't get a win, you know what I mean? So the, uh, doing little things has been great. Um, I had another finish and um, this is an eight part series and I did four parts together. It is the Sew Together series by Jeanette Douglas. This is part one, this is part two, this is part three, and this is part four. And on 40 count Malo, I have them done. And this is my fabric that was not my friend. We're still not best friends, but we're friends now. So it's even with great, um, magnification there's a fleck in this fabric and it just it's just hard i think there's just hard fabrics for some people and but i love the choice and it's beautiful and i love jeanette she is just masterful i love that she adds some specialty stitches here and there like i love the roof of this and um, I just think it turned out fantastic. Now there are four other parts. And I had said I was gonna take the other side of the fabric and do the four together and I am not doing that because I need some finish. I don't want to commit to a large piece. I'm going to frame this. I think I'm gonna frame this myself. That, mm, to be determined, but possibly. But this is part five. This would be perfect for me to finish if I could finish that before Easter, that would be a neat Easter finish. This is part six. This is part seven. And this is part eight. And I love these smalls. These are so pretty and they're so up my alley because they're sampler related. And um, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm not gonna use the fabric <laughs> that I used for here. This is going to get framed. I believe I'm gonna frame it myself. I'm going to determine that this coming week. But the other four pieces, I'm gonna switch the fabric because I am. <laughs> <laughs> and um, because I think I could have got that done a whole lot quicker, but I struggled so terribly in the beginning. It took till the fourth one for me to just feel um, comfortable with the fabric. I had very strong magnification and I used my magnifier for the first two pieces. And then my eyes finally adjusted by the third piece and I was able to just use my, my, my strong readers. And then by the uh, fourth piece, I was more relaxed in it, but that's just too much trouble. I'm not doing that again. Um, I, I think it's beautiful and it turned out great and I persevered through it. I'm gonna pick another piece of fabric and I'm going to do you know, probably little um, pin cushions with the other ones. And they'll just be, maybe I'll sit the framed piece here in the studio and the four little pieces with it because I need wins. I don't need a long-term project. So um, that's too big. So that was another finish. And then I have two fully finishes and they are out of the Keeper of the Pins book by Brenda Gervais. Um, I used, um, this is 36 count LFA, uh, millstone. Unfortunately, you can't get this linen anymore because they're not dyeing it anymore. Um, they are originally, um, yarn dyers. And so they had dabbled into that, but they have decided that that's not their thing. So, but this is one, millstone. Of course I love it. I'm sitting in a mill house. Love that. One of the ones that I did, um, 
it was a suggestion. It wasn't necessarily a pattern. It was, it's, it says, grab yourself a jar of old buttons. And I just went and found the tomato in one of the patterns and you sew it in the middle and you take old buttons. And this is my finish. Now I'll tell you, I hoard these particular buttons. If you take a look at these, this bottom row is bone and these are porcelain. These are actually what they called underwear buttons. Gentlemen back in the 1800s wore their underwear, underwear looked like a one full set of long johns and they buttoned and these are the buttons and they're hard to find some are bone and those are the oldest ones and if you ever look up underwear buttons like they can be super ginormous expensive so when i find them i have a jar that i hoard them in and so i thought this was the perfect thing for me to get to enjoy some of them i used some silk ribbon and put some beautiful pins and then i finished the back like this with a 2024 um, little tag. I don't know how this flips itself. Maybe, oh, there we go. There, it's hanging right now. Okay. And I love that. And that's some French general fabric. But I think it turned out just lovely. And that is one that I did. And then the other one that I love so much was the sewing bird right here. And the reason why I pulled these out, because Olivia from um, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, she had showed ye old trench bowl, and she showed her sewing bird. And if you notice on mine, I used some Lady Dot Creates. This is vintage, is the Rick Rack. It, but I used the little, see on here, the heads of the pins are, are um, our beads. Well, I did what Olivia did, and I beaded the Rick Rack as well. This is the piece of fabric that I finished it with from, um, from Needlework Press's room. But I am in love with this one. I'm in love with both of them. But I love the beads and I love the beaded edge. Thank you, Olivia, for your inspiration. Um, and that these were stitched. Yeah, they were both stitched on millstone but they they take on a different hue because if you notice the buttons on here have more of a creamy brown look so it's the same fabric but look at the color but the same very same fabric and you put the different colors with it and it looks more like a blue cast on that brown isn't that interesting it's the very same fabric so this one i filled with wool from my sheep and um also walnut um, crushed walnut shells which I always usually do but this one I filled completely with walnut shells and it turned out good um, I personally hate when the little walnut shells fell off fill, fall out of the edge you know you pack them down and pack them down and then you put some more in, and then you pack them down and pack them down and then I was ladder stitching my hole along the edge closed and oh I hate that and I always seem to be sitting right there with my sewing machine bad move but anyway nonetheless these two are adorable i love them and i love these little wins and those came from keeper of the pins all the called for colors 36 count millstone from lfa linens love that and then another fully finish beautiful wonderful paula and carlton from craft gallery hand delivered my violets blue to me at uh, Nashville Needlework Market. You talk about service. They drove this all the way to Nashville and protected it and delivered it by hand to me there. Did they not do a stunning, stunning job? And I'm so pleased with it. I have it sitting on the mantle right now. I switched them out and this one's getting um, its glory. I stitched this for my husband the, the verse says, as the violets blue, my heart is true, dear sweetheart, I love but you. And I put 1984 because that's the year that um, they gave me his class ring when we were in high school. And I put my maiden initials and I put his initials into it. And I stitched this for my sweetheart because I love him so much. And this was the perfect piece to tell him. So those are all my finishes and fully finishes and my whips 
that are um, stitching related. I do have a whip and a fully finished item that uh, are knitting related. Uh, when Carrie and I were down in Nashville, I'm using my Susan Stanley bag as a sock bag now. I love this bag and it's so pretty. We bought some sock yarn, self-striping -stri sock yarn. She showed hers on her video, but it wasn't caked up yet. So, but that's what it looks like caked up and I started a sock. So this, I'm, I'm working on the ribbing on the cuff. So that, as I said, that's a, a whip. And I'm just doing a two by two rib. I do a vanilla sock. I'm just, you know, it's mindless. I, I just knit, 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 knit. And I don't have to think I can make socks without a pattern. And that's one of my favorite things to do. So that was another piece of haul from um, Nashville. We had gone to my favorite um, knitting shop, Bliss Yarns, when we were down there. And um, I, I just, I, we said we were going to go to a knit shop. I said, oh, well, my favorite one's really close. And she looked up, she goes, oh, I, that, I, was, I found that one too. I said, well, it's great. And we walked in and Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch was standing there in her beautiful knit sweater that she had finished, except for we got the secret. She goes, look, I just wore it and I didn't, <laughs> she hadn't put her hands in. And we were like, you go girl, I would wear my sweater too. But when we walked in the door, there was a model. And it's just like seeing a stitched model. When you see a knitted model, it makes you crazy. And I saw this. It was the Carmen Cow. And it's by Claudia Q. And the model was in the shop. And I fell in love with it. And let me tell you something. I came home and I knit the darn thing in six days. And so this is mine. And it's... They call it a cowl, but listen, it goes to your belly button. I mean, you pull it down and it goes under your girls and everything. It's more of a shrug. And I love the bottom, um, how it's got the ribbing, then it's got the, the break line, then the ribbing. And I bought the yarn there at Bliss Yarns. But I did, I came home and burned it up. I put it in this bag. One of my viewers, Sweet Teresa Potter, made this for me and sent it to me. It has been housing this. And this is an extra cake of the yarn. You know what? You always buy. I, I do. It called for three, and I and I, I want to tell you, I made the bigger size because I didn't want it to be tight because I got a lot to offer up there. <laughs> and so I was afraid, so I bought an extra yarn. But I used the prescribed yarn was three balls. This is all that was left. So it could have been... A necessity but I do have an extra one maybe I think I may knit some mitts fingerless mitts because that'd be cute with that cow when it's or I think it should be called a shrug don't you I mean look that's all the way to her midriff so anyway I love that and it has been uh, soaked and blocked and it's ready to wear and I love it and I knit, 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 knit like fool. So we, I got home on Sunday and I had it done by Saturday, Friday night, Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah, whipped it right out. So that was my other finish. That was a fully finish and a whip from my knitting. So anyway, all right, now what's next on the agenda? Okay, now we're gonna go to just regular haul. I told you, this is a feature length film wrap on your seatbelt. Okay. Well, first things first, we know that I'm a scissor fanatic and I ordered myself a pair of Golden Forge scissors. Um, and I got them from Hoop and Frame. Laura from Le uh, Brenda and the Serial Starter, she had suggested that these were fantastic and she showed a pair and I was like, hmm, never saw those. I think I'll order a pair, which sent me on a tangent. So those couldn't come all alone. So I ordered a, along with that, if I could figure it out, I ordered a pair of their hostage. I may need scissors. <laughs> I remember getting these out. I just can't remember how to get them out. Hmm. I bought a pair of Bowen Heart scissors. And unfortunately, right now, I'm not going to waste the time to figure out how to get them out of there. You can see them through there. They're called the Bowen Hearts. 
I ordered those. I don't even know. Anyhow, they're hostage. I'll get them out. I'm sure they'll show up in a picture somewhere. And then I bought, I had wanted a pair of pink Kohanas. And so I found a pair. These, I think. They're kind of hard to find, I think. So, they're the blushy pink ones. So I found them, and I love how the little box, I have my red Kohana box. I think that something needs to be finished on top of that. And then they send you the little microfiber cloth with them. So, those are very nice. I've had a hard time not opening these scissors to mess with them because I love scissors. I walked around my studio the other day and I have, I mean, I have so many scissor holders filled with scissors. They're just so fun. I love them. There's nothing like good scissors. Another thing I got was, is I'm part of the, um, uh, the uh, Fox and Rabbit um, Patreon. And so they sent me two quarters worth. I think I must have missed, they must have missed sending me last quarter. So I got four pieces of fabric in the mail, which was very excited. One is 40 count paper bark. The other is 40 count ocean air. 40 count Eureka. and then 40 count flannel flowers. I mean, it's okay that they missed sending it and sent two quarters. I felt like I had linen Christmas. That was wonderful, love that. And then as well, I ordered from my sweet friend, Tina Egner um, from Team Egner on um, Etsy. She did some custom floss drops um, to go along with um, Christy from Floss Boss and Cousins. Her birthday sal is Prairie Life. And so she made the accompanying uh, floss drops to go with and so of course I had to have the pretty to go with it I'm probably going to be with that for a while because it's a, a little bit bigger sampler so uh, of course I love to support Tina and so I ordered that in I also this is I love this piece so much this is from Emily Call and of course again what do I keep saying the kindness keeps following me kindness begins with me from Emily Call do you not love that just absolutely love it. Um, I love the bright and sherry colors. I may put a little, um, prim it up just slightly, and I think I'm gonna use my Belsois um, silks to do that, And um, but I love this. I, I want this out front in for everybody to see. Love that. I got, since I saw you last, I got my Floss Frenzy from um, February from um, the Fat Quarter Shop, and I also got my March Floss Fix from there, and the Floss Fix is classic, and the Floss Frenzy is Weeks, and for February, it was Daffodil, Dahlia, Daylily, Deep Sea, Dirt Road, and Dolphin, and for Floss Fix, it was Dublin Bay, Dolce de Lit, Dolce de Leche, Eggshell, Embers, English Ivy, and Erin Gobra. And so that was the Floss Fix and the Floss Frenzy from the Fat Quarter Shop. That is someone else that I got to meet when I was down there. I tell you what, Cheryl Cohen, I fangirl her. She is the model stitcher. She stitches um, so many things for Kimberly Jolly. And um, she messaged me one time, sent me an email, and I was so floored. I think I've talked about that before because I just, I, I, I just look up to her. She's a beautiful stitcher. And she um, emailed me one time and told me she loved watching my floss too. And I was like, you watch me? You know, so anyway, around the corner, Carrie and I came and there was Cheryl. And, um, and Kimberly came and she had a whole press with her. And all of a sudden she goes, come here, Kimberly. And she's like, Kimberly. And she's one of our ambassadors because I am an ambassador for Fat Quarter Shop. I love them. A lot of the things that I give away, they have sent here for you. And um, I'm proud to do that. They are a wonderful company and I appreciate them so much for spoiling our audience. And um, 
So uh, Cheryl introduced us to Kimberly and Kimberly said, well, come here. And she's like, come here, pictures. And I was like, you wanna have pictures with us? I was just, I was fangirling, I think super hard because I love her company. I love her quilting. I love what she's doing to teach and help and um, express the joy to um, stitchers and help them along. And if they're not stitchers, teach them to be. There are so many people that I have found out that have, you know, especially with starting the Facebook group, uh, you know, at my two questions, you know, one of my questions is when did you start stitching? And it's so funny how many people have said that um, they started during the pandemic and, or they started stitching um, or, or they restarted stitching during the pandemic, but they, um, so many people said that Kimberly Jolly taught them to cross stitch and now they're sampler lovers like me. And I'm just like, that is so amazing. So anyway, I enjoyed that so, so very much. Okay, onward. I am part of the Homespun Needle at Work Samplers and Needlework group on Facebook, and I got the BAP, the Big Awesome Project. This is the ginormous, ginormous project. And to be honest with you, I'm gonna. I'm an honest person. I'm gonna tell you 100% truth. Okay, here's the, all the DMCs. You got the beautiful linen, which I got the 36 count, and it's mason linens, which I was really excited. I've never stitched on them. And um, this I, this was supposed to be my leap year start. I was gone. I was in Nashville. This is the tray that came with it as well. Love, love, love this. Okay, so here's the truth. I put in a few stitches because I thought... I'll just it was just a few stitches and I thought well you know I don't I you know I don't know if I'm going to be able to stitch while I'm gone so I'll get a few stitches on, on it and I'll call it a leap year start it's my leap year start I get to call it whatever I want but I did that the night before I left for Nashville and I never did stitch on it because I couldn't I was gone so but it's still my leap year start and I and I say that because that's what I want to call it, and I'm hoping to have it done before leap year comes around again. So that is my big, awesome project from the Homespun Needlework and um, Sampler Group, Char uh, Charlotte Warrington, 1838. It is ginormous, but I love it. I mean, it's got a feel to sheep, people. You know that's a Shelly Sampler right there. <laughs> and so... And the model was so big, it just got done the other day because I saw that they showed it completed stitched, but it, it's ginormous. I was watching uh, recently, um, I went back and I was watching a uh, fiber talk with uh, Gary Parr and it was with Jean Lee. I got to meet Jean Lee too, which was just awesome. She is just a first class lady, a sampler lover, an extraordinaire and um, the conveyor of the love of that to everyone around her. But, um, you know, sometimes I love to watch the old videos and I went back and I was watching a, um, a uh, fiber talk back from four years ago and oh my gosh the inspiration there was Jean in the shop and showing all the things and two of the things that she showed I fell in love with and one of them is from uh, cross stitch antiques and it was innocence 1840 I bought all the threads and I got the chart Jean particularly loves anything with roses and I thought you're my girl even more. I love that. And so I absolutely love, love, love this chart. That border is so pretty in the carnations and the roses. And I think a big poppy in the center. So I bought that. Get that shopping off of a four-year-old video. Of course, I had to dig a little bit for that. I had to dig a little harder and buy this on the secondary market. This is a scarlet letter. It's called Jesus Wept, and it's a rare two-sided miniature sampler circa 1820. There was a front and a back, and the whole back is words that were stitched, and the front is um, a small sampler. I am only going to do the top on the small sampler but it was two-sided and it got recharted and she showed it and I fell in love with it. 
So I bought it and uh, I bought it as a kit. I found it on eBay because this, this is old. So it's the full kit and it came with 35 can count hand dyed linen. I'm gonna use everything that's with it. Why, why go get anything else? So I'm gonna stitch it exactly how it's called for. So it's 35 count and I think it's nine and a half inches square when it's done and it was good to find the whole kit. I love anything that you push pay and everything comes your way. That's, I, I'm a lazy shopper. Pfft, send it all to me. <laughs> I also bought the Strawberry Hill Sampler by Jen, uh, uh, Brenda Gervais. Fell in love with this. And I almost started this one right before I left. But I try not to, um, I try not to use my haul. I try not to eat my candy or anything between videos because I want to show it to you as I had it. So, but I almost did break that roll and do this piece right here. So, but I love this strawberry hill sampler. I love anything strawberries and tomato. I have whole sections in here of uh, tons of tomatoes and I love strawberries. I love to stitch them. So anyway, anything with that on it, I love it. So I enjoyed that so much. Almost did it, but saved it for you. I told you that I fell so hard in love Due to Burgett and the inspiration of Brenda from Brenda and the Serial Starter, I fell hard in love with Jenny Thompson sampler uh, uh, flower threads. So I ordered myself the complete set. You can't get the you used to be able to get them in a bin. And um, if you see right here, these are the Amazon boxes. That's two sets, one on top of the other. I have one over here that I bought just to put the Jenny Thompson's in. So that's where those are going to go. Love those and love to have that. You know, uh, Brenda was talking in their latest video the other day. And Laura had stitched something on 32 with two strands. And uh, Brenda has stitched um, some of them. I talk all the time about um, comfort stitching. I've talked about that since we started this. But I consider <laughs> stitching with flower threads and wool threads on 28 and 32 count. That's luxury stitching because <laughs> that's not even comfort. That's luxury. That To me, it's bougie stitching because it gives my eyes a break. And it, I just, it, it's like Brenda says, it's, it's just joyful. You can't wait to get your hands on it because you know you're just going to plow through it and, and it's going to come to life on that linen in front of you. And I love stitching on little stuff. And you're going to see that when I talk about the silk. Um, I, I'm going to show you a piece on 56. And I loved stitching that. I love stretching myself in different directions. I love the look of things on certain fabrics. Uh, but sometimes I choose them because the size. But I will say that due to Burgett and her wonderful kit, kif, kits, I bought all the kits that she sold with the flower threads. And I bought um, Jane Parsons with the wool. And I have to thank Burgett for those wonderful kits because they are comfortable. They're luxurious. They, you crave to stitch on them because it's just the joy of it. There's I don't need to explain that to you. You are the friends that understand every word of what I just said. And so um, I, I had to buy the whole set because I plan on doing, having something like on the regular with those things. And that way, if I wanna convert something, I can. And they even sent, um, that I, I, they sent a little um, thing and it's got um, uh, the little thing which tells you the conversion to um, DMC. So that's great. You could just look at the DMC conversion, look at their conversion to theirs, and voila, there you have it. So, and then the last thing I'm going to show you that I got before we talk about the silks is from Hobby House. I ordered a present for a friend, and I ordered the entire kit from Hobby House. I know a lot of you have seen this. This is in two colors, and I got it in the Soie d'Alger. It came that way in the kit. And the fabric for it is uh, 40 Count, um, The Cat's Whiskers by Tabby Cat. You know I haven't even opened it. Let's look at the linen. That would be novel, wouldn't it? Let's open up my linen. Oh, isn't it pretty? So this is The Cat's Whiskers. 
So that's a beautiful, that's a good representation right there. Okay, so that came with it. And then because I got the whole kit, this came with it as well. And what's in here, there's a cute little charm that's a gift. You could reuse this. Mm -hmm. It came with the scissor cube. Of course it did. Look at there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Got the scissors. <laughs> so it's the matching scissor cube that has the pattern on it. Let me see if I can't get you to see that better. Okay. And so that's the last thing I have to show you for my haul. So, I mean, there's haul everywhere. This room looked looks like a mercantile burped. <laughs> it's just craziness. Okay, so you've seen my whips, you've seen my finishes, we've caught up, you saw my market haul, and um, you've seen all of this haul. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna convey now, and let's have a little talk about silk. I am looking so forward to sharing anything that I know with you, and maybe make a few of you more comfortable with it. So give me just one second and I'll be right back. Okay, let's talk silk. Okay. There was a question posed in my Facebook group yesterday by uh, Nana, and um, she wanted to know all the things. She had never stitched on silk, and uh, she wanted to know, did you stitch the same way? Do you wax it? Does it fray? Do, do you stitch it the same on the fabrics as you do cottons, etc., etc.? And so I piped in, and I gave her, um, I gave her some of my input, but um, I thought, I said on the group, you know, the group started having a lively conversation and I thought, this is a perfect topic and I know that I have a lot to show in my video, but why not add this in? Everybody says they love the videos when they're long, so here you go. It just, instead of making a whole separate video. You know what, let me try to adjust the camera just a little bit, there you go. Okay, I feel it like it's lopsided, okay. The first silk that everyone is very, very familiar with is Averisua silks. Now, let's talk a little bit about silk. So, silk is a protein fiber. It's uh, made um, as a, a um, caterpillar metamorphosizes. It creates this cocoon around itself as it turns into a butterfly. And so, um, it's very luxurious. As a matter of fact, I wish that I would have grabbed them over in my fiber studio. I have a couple cocoons, and I also have, it's they call it um, a silk hanky, and it's where they've wet the silk cocoon, and they've smashed it down and kind of stretched it out. Well, you take the very edge of it loose, or and on the cocoon, you just wet the cocoon, and you pull it, and then you spin it into thread. You turn it into thread. And so anyway, I have some of that over there and that is how silk is produced. But, you know, um, most of the silk um, for, um, for thread is mulberry silk. That doesn't mean it's a berry. It's um, the type of, um, the type of caterpillar, you know, um, in the way it's produced. But anyway, some come in 12 strands, some come in eight strand, some come in six strands, some is more shiny than others. Um, some is thinner, some, and so let's talk just a little bit about that. And I thought the best way was I pulled a bunch of manufacturers. I have some information on one, but I could I know I have that manufacturer here, but it's in a project bag in the project library someplace because it wasn't in my silk cabinet. And so I'm not going to have an example of that, but I still want to talk about their silk in this. But we're going to talk about Averisua first. Okay, there are three lines of silk from Averisua that you're all very familiar with. The first one being Soie d'Alger. And that's S-O-I-E and then D hyphen A-L-G-E-R. It's it looks like Soie d'Alger or Dialger, but it's Soie d'Alger. And Soie d'Alger is seven stranded. It comes in two sizes. You can either get, um, I believe it's, um, one's a hank. And the skeins are, um, they're, four, they're five meters or 45 meters, which converted to yards is 5.46 yards 
or 49.1 yards. And for a, a skein of this Swell d'Alger, it runs about $4.80. And so you're gonna get about, this is about close to five and a half yards, what you're getting in here. Like I said, it's six stranded. There is one of the things, if you've never uh, dealt with it, you find the end like you would on your DMC, but there's a knot, you have to snip the knot. If you don't snip the knot when you pull it and you try to separate it, well, you're gonna have a little problem. And so um, it's a very nice silk. It separates well, um, and you stitch with it exactly how you would stitch with a cotton. I will say, like I said in the comment, um, last night um, in the group that unfortunately you know anytime you stitch with two threads um, and that's not to diminish two threads but every time you do it's twice as much because you're going to use twice as much um, thread so um, these are solid color um, threads and so these this is not variegated this would be a solid color thread um, I am notorious for stitching with one thread on no matter what count. I have stitched, I start a stitch, Stitcher's Resolution from Beth Twist, and you can see that in a prior video, and I stitched it on 28 count with one thread, and it looked gorgeous. But my coverage desire, I like things to look antique. Um, and um, the, the more puffier stitches, they don't, I think that it, for me, that more wispy look, but that's my aesthetic and that's okay. And I know that like Liz Matthews, she loves three strands because she loves big puffy stitches. And I think that's fantastic. Um, but see, that's the difference in stitchers and that's okay. We all are very different. You do you, but, um, I am notorious and I think, and I have stitched with one strand all the way down to 28 counts. So you can do as you want, but you use this exact Exactly how you would um, a DMC and you can do the loop method or you know pull two strands but again you'll probably need to wind this off and cut it so that you can have a nice length um, and put it on a floss drop because you know of pulling it out of here um, I will say that silks do not stitch. I'm like, I am bad for when there's a border that's one color and you're like going to go zigzag or straight across or, you know, two up and two down or something like that. I will pull this long thread off. I don't necessarily do that with silk um, because it can fluff up and fray a little bit, but I... I wax all my threads. Now there is team condition and there's no, there's team no condition. And again, it's a personal choice. But what I will say about waxing your threads is when you wax your threads, they behave. They're less likely to not. And um, one of the things that people, and it's the truth, when you stitch with silk, I prefer using a 28 needle because that eye will hold that silk better. But even in a 28, you know, it's slick. And so um, anyway, if you wax that thread, it stays in the eye of that needle. I mean, like a champion. And I don't mean wax the fire out of it. I pull my thread and I, I do it this way. I come about a quarter of the way up and I pull it, you know, pull it across the wax because I want to make sure I get the end waxed. And then I have my finger there and then I, I go back and I do the other end. That way I know that I haven't missed the ends because I want to make sure about the whole needle thing. And then I run my finger across it. Do not lay your wax on like thick. Just pull it across there once, maybe twice, depending on how it catches and you will be good as gold. Speaking of that, see, that's a trick. And um, a whole nother thing to collect are beautiful waxers. Um, this is something I had custom made and I gave away as gifts last year. It's a lamb. 
I took these to retreats and I gave these to my, my dear friends. Uh, a lady up the street has um, the Claremont House of Honey and she is such a sweetheart and a friend of mine and I go by my honey there and um, she does beautiful candles. And I said, Christine, if you left the wick out, that you would have a whole nother customer. Those are those would be waxers. And she said, oh, so she did beautiful boxing and did these, I, I picked out the shapes I wanted and had beautiful waxers done, and this is one of my favorites. Now, I won't be using this one, but I do have another one, and you know that waxer could last for a very long time. The rest of these are Stacy Nash's daughter, um, Taylor Nash's, and I love to collect them. This is one. And this is one. And this is neat because this little one you could hook. I, I want to be honest with you. These are my pretties. Um, I have a set of these to use. <laughs> these, are, these hang and decorate and they look beautiful in the studio. But I always buy two so that I have one to use. This is one of the, I just showed you this, I think, on the last video. And then this is a full strawberry. And those were all made by Taylor Nash. And they're beautiful. And you can buy those too. There's an antique button on top of that as well. And so that's a whole nother ball of wax to collect your waxers, ball of wax, pun intended. But so I love them, but I do have waxers everywhere. I appreciate them. One of the things I love about um, Farm Girl Dry Goods, Michelle Rudy, and her and her husband, when they make kits, you always get a beautiful waxer. And I appreciate that so much. So Michelle, if you're watching this, thanks. I love that part of your kits because I do like to wax my threads, in particular my silks. And I had that question asked to me, do you mean you're gonna wax a pretty silk? Yes, because they need to be taught to behave. And they will. Um, another piece of advice I would give you on silks is when you are beginning or ending a stitch. If you're not going to pin stitch, if you're not a pin stitcher, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm not saying that I, that's my mode, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I always make sure I leave a, a goodly tail on the back and I, I enter and make sure that stitch is crossed over in the back and um, for the, at least the first two stitches and then by then it's trained to whatever way I've got it going and then I cover it more because you want to get a good tail covered on silk again they're slick so but the wax does help but the other thing is is when you uh, pull your thread under to end it make sure you get it under three to six stitches because you want to get a goodly piece of that silk because you don't want it to shimmy loose. Again, the wax really helps, and but do tuck your tails very judiciously and be careful with that. Um, don't pull too hard when you're very first starting because you're going to pull up on them. I, I don't, and don't be afraid by the things I'm saying. I'm just giving you some helpful hints, and I don't know that my hints are right. I just know that they're helpful, and they've helped me. And so that is very, very helpful. So now let's go on to looking at some more. So this was Swa Dal Shay. This is 103. Now, I will say this, if you're gonna stitch with two, you can do it with 103, and you could loop it, or you could pull two pieces. I would venture to say that Soile d'Alger is more of what you should pick. That's not a definitive, that's just an opinion. I think that a Soile d'Alger um, would be good for a 28 or a 32 over two. If you were moving to a um, 36 or a 40, um, and some people say 40 and above for 103, but I use a 103 on 36 and 40, and 46 as well, and that is this one. It comes on a spool, and it's a single ply, so you're not having to separate strands. They come in a 50 meters, which is 54.68 yards, and this is about $3.80. And then the third in the line is the Swa Surfine. Now, if you look up and you translate the word Swa Surfine it, from French to English, it's super fine silk. That's what Swa Surfine is. Now, 
I just stitched this piece recently, which is one of my newest favorite pillows that I've ever made. And this is 56 count, Cafe Au Lait. And I used this silk right here, Soisurfine, 56 count. I used a 28 needle. Now, um, I do have um, some number 10 John James beading needles being given to me by a friend because I got regular beading needles and they were like really long and they were number 10 and it was like, uh, it was like stitching with a sword. <laughs> it wasn't the right needle. But so I just used a Pony 28 and it worked out perfect. But you see how fine and delicate that stitching is? on that 56 count it makes stitching on 56 count a breeze the swasser fiend and so um that you it's a single ply you get 100 meters which is 109.36 yards because it's so fine you get actually more yardage of it and this runs about five dollars sixty cents so those are the avera swan line and the next one I'm going to show you is, um, it's actually one of my favorites. All silk has a little bit of sheen to it, but I feel like there's a, there's a few other ones that I feel like have this as well. But the, I find that the uh, Belle Soise, I consider them like a matte finish. They still have a shine to them, but it's not a high, high shine. And that's my observation, and I happen to love them. Now, this Swa, uh, Belle Soie by Classic Color Works runs about $7.99 a skein, but you get five yards, and it's 12-stranded. Do the math. 12-stranded and five yards. So what's five times 12? So you get a lot of thread for your buck for that because it's 12-stranded. So um, where your, um, the seven stranded Soie d'Alger is um, five and a half, about five and a half yards, it's only seven stranded and it may be $4.80, but this is $7.99, you're getting 12 strands. So Classic Color Works, Belle Soie. That is, um, I love, I love all these silks. Don't kid yourself. That's why they, we talked about this last night and I walked out here and pulled them out of the drawer. I mean, I, I just love them all. But I do love the feel and I love the, the finish of Belle Soie. That's one of my favorites. Okay. I have, where is this one? This one goes over here. Okay. I See, I did my homework for you all since last night. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is um, NPI silks, and that that on the label and in some of your online shops, you will see it. It's Needlepoint Ink Silk, Needlepoint Incorporated. This is what it looks like, and that's its label. So whether you see it as NPI, it's Needlepoint Silk, Needlepoint Ink. Now, this is an 8-ply, and you get about 5.46 yards because it's 5 meters, and this is $4.99. This is a highly consistent dye lot. And so it's the industry standard for, um, it is truly, truly a uh, very consistent dye. And um, they're solids. So um, this, this, when I say they're solids, that's like your DMC but in silk. Does that make sense? And so um, that's NPI. The next one I'm going to show you is uh, Silk and Colors by Thread Gatherer. And it has a handle and a finish on it, like a Belle Soie, as far as I'm concerned. And it's a 12-stranded as well. And it's, oh, but I, if I didn't, I can't remember, if I didn't say it, um, NPI is about $4.99 a skein. Okay, and the thread gatherer is 12 stranded and five yards, and it is eight dollars. So it's about comparable to a Belle Soie. And they have an absolutely beautiful palette. Now, the next one that I want to tell you about is the one I don't have in front of me. When you get it, it looks something like this, and it is a dinky dice. It, it there, I have them. I have something completely kitted and dinky dies because I bought a whole pattern worth of it. I must have already kitted it up because it wasn't in the drawers. 
although I don't have it in front of me, I will say it comes like that. And um, it's six stranded and it's eight meters or 8.74 yards. And Dinky Dyes is about $5 a skein. This one is Gloriana Silks. And my friend Beth from my sister Sampler is the dyer for these. I love that. I feel like she's visiting my house knowing that that's where this came from. Uh, Gloriana is about 850. It's six yards. So it's an extra yard and it's 12 stranded as well. And so it's very beautiful and variegated. And so is the thread gatherer. And so is Belle Swad. They are not solid. So those are, those are hand dyed. Now, Bestitch Me also has a silk line. And this is one of theirs. And it's a variegated floss. And it's six stranded and 10 yards. And it's about $5. And it's a wonderful choice. Now, the last, I have three pages of notes, and I have all of these different silks on here. I'm so glad that I had them on hand. This is so wonderful that I can share this information with you. Now, everybody has heard about Victoria Clayton silks. This is what they look like. They come on a spool, and they look like that, and they have a number. And on her, um, she's very quick to show you the conversions to a DMC, so they're very easy. These are, you can buy them variegated, you can buy them solid, and you can buy a super fine. Super fine is six stranded, it's 18.3 yards, and it's a dollar 50 a spool. I'm telling you, Victoria Clayton silks are the most affordable. It, they have a, a higher shine than the other ones. Their variegated spools are six stranded and five yards, and they are hand dyed and they are $3 a spool. And they're six stranded seven yards on their solids and they are $3, so they're very affordable. And one of the great things that Vicki Clayton does is she has, I mean, some of the most famous patterns. She's already got the whole conversion done and you can go and look in her conversions and just go click. You don't even have to, so be, if you ever go to Victoria Clayton Silks, look in her, um, in her, um, her sets that are already done because if you're looking for a particular chart you can just punch it into her search and if she has it already converted you can just click it and all the silks they voila they show up and so they're very highly affordable and it gets you in the door to try some silks and then um the next one i wanted to show you is miss sada's silk mrs sada's and she has an Etsy shop, but she also has a, her own website. Um, her, they are hand dyed, six stranded, and 11 yards for $5.13 on her Etsy shop. But if you go on her website, the same thing is $4.46. I'm thinking that um, the, possibly the extra 30 cents roundabout is probably because of fees. But um, you know, I, I, I talked to Carrie this morning because I thought she was out of Spain and it says shipping from Germany. So I, I'm not sure, you know, so, but anyway, it's not in America and it's Mrs. M-I-S-S-U-S, Sada's, S-E-D-A-S, Mrs. Sada's Silk. And they have a beautiful line and Carrie actually has the entire line. She treated herself one year. And so those are very, very nice. Now the last company I'm gonna show you is a hand dyer, and I believe she's out of Florida. She has a Facebook page, and it's called Mo's, M-O apostrophe S, Sale, S-A-L-E. Now, you have to go to Facebook to find that. But when I show you what I'm gonna show you, you're probably gonna fall off your rocking chair. So all of her things are hand dyed. And this is a regular skein. You get on there and, and, and you'll see a post when she sells her silk on there and she sells it on certain days. 
and it'll say like this one is called slate let's say i went and i was buying this slate and it'll show the picture of it and it'll say 28 available and then you go in the comments and you say um, yes please and then you put 27 like if it said there's 28 then you put 27 so the next person knows there's only 27 more available and so she does small batch dyeing and that's how she sells it but when i i want to show you something this is four dollars and this is 17 yards 17 yards okay but i'm gonna and you know what i forgot to, i'm gonna count the strands because i forgot to count the strands one second on this one it's two, four, it's six stranded, okay? So this is six stranded. Let me make sure the other one, because the one I'm gonna show you is gonna blow your mind. Two, four, six, mm, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's all six stranded, okay. She sells Hanks and they're ginormous. They're 120 yards for $20. If you were doing a monochromatic sampler, wouldn't it be really nice to just grab this? <laughs> That's, I, I have about seven of these that I bought in different colors. One is like, um, it's like a taupe, but it almost looks like an antique rose. Does that make sense? I have an aqua, I have like one that's shades of blue, I have this one that's like shades of pink, and one that's kind of almost a rusty rose color. Um, I, I have several of them, but I mean, where are you going to get 120 yards of custom dyed silk for it that gives you high variation like this? And you could do a monochromatic piece and it'd be something really neat. You could do a big giant one with this and it's like one and done, 20 bucks bought. So this is 120 yards six skeins and that's just another option there's all kinds of silks out there i know dmc has silk and there's other silk dyers but that just invited you all into a little talk about silk i hope like i said make sure that you cover your tail very carefully and you get it more than one or two stitches underneath there. Be judicious or pin stitch it, um, but you can just make sure that you stitch over it carefully. Um, make sure that when you're ending your thread that you, um, that you get it under several stitches. I would suggest that you wax um, just because it makes, I'm just, it makes all thread behave and I'm a waxer and always have been. I appreciate it. Um, when I uh, learned to um, hand quilt, I appreciated um, thread magic and thread heaven and waxing. It really, really is helpful because when you're pulling that thread over and over again and it's something as luxurious and uh you know it's strong but you know um it can fray it's a natural product as silk you know you're protecting it one of the things i was going to tell you is this i had said that i had done the um article for um the queen city sampler guild on thread winders and one of the things that i learned was back when um, before um, the manufacturing of silk it was or silk or thread of any kind it was all done by hand and they went through a very laborious um uh, practice of spinning it and then they waxed all the threads and they had to work the nubs out and then they used the wax to get the nubs down from the spinning process but uh, you know and so it was very laborious and so I learned so much about that and um, you know I think they figured out uh, you know why you use wax but if you're not a waxer no offense taken and I hope no offense given um, just you know we all have our way of doing things but it it's a helpful tool so that's my little chitty chat about silk and I and if you have any questions you can ask it in the Facebook group you can leave it in the comments you can email me um, but um, I hope that that has introduced you to some things um, you understand now at least some of the price variations to understand that some are 12 8 6 7 stranded um, some come on spools some are shinier than others um, but yet none the, the less they all stitch like um, I think they tend to um, 
to not less, I think maybe because of that slickeriness, but um, also uh, mine not less because I wax. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that segment. And so now let's talk about the giveaways. Okay, on our last video, um, we had a few items and we'll start with this one. This one is the needle minder that is a little uh saucer and the keyword for that was um was tea and the winner of this is uh nancy suma 6560 nancy suma 65 that's s-u-m-m-a suma 6560 you are the winner of the little tea plate needle minder uh you get in touch with me all my information on how to get a hold of me by email is below in the description box congratulations to you nancy um as a matter of fact this right here the kind words that i did um this is the pattern i used and this is, uh, the keyword for it was forgotten. And Mary A. Willis is the winner of Kind Words. And so Mary, if you'll get a hold of me, I'll get that right out to you. Congratulations. Then the next item I had was Mother's Garden by Blackbird Designs. And the call word for that was garden. And the winner of that is L underscore justice. L underscore justice. You have won the Blackbird Designs. Give me a message and I will get that right out to you. And when you all are, um, are emailing me, do refer to me what you won, just so we've got layers and layers and layers of who won what. Okay, and the next thing was the um, the little uh, shepherd's bush sheep pattern with the button on the back, and the word for that was sheep, and the winner of that is Ms. M. S. Cindy at C I N D Y E, and the number one M. S. C-I-N-D-Y-E, and the number one, you are the winner of the Shepherd's Bush Sheep Pattern. Congratulations. And then we had the Great Granny Squared book from uh, Lori Holt that was produced by It's Oema Designs. And the word for it was Granny. And the winner of the quilt book is Linda Meeks, M-E-E-K-S, 5228. Linda Meeks 5228. You are the winner of the Great Granny Squared. Get in touch with me. Congratulations. And then I have the two bags that were sent to me by my friend Denise, Miss Dot Dot Goose Designs. We had the bra with the cancer awareness ribbons. And we have the beautiful love birds. And um, oh, we have two winners, and whoever contacts me first will get the one on the top of the basket. And the word for that was um, was bag. And winner number one is Jean, J-E-A-N, in the letter G, 5451. Jean G, 5451, you are one of the winners of the bags. And Pink Kitty 5844, you are the other winner of the bag. Pink Kitty 5844. If you all will contact me, I'll be glad to get those out for you. Congratulations. I love being able to share things with my sweet uh, viewers. And so I also have some more giveaways today, like I said. And let me put, let me put these back in here. These are the spoken for ones and these are the new ones okay let's see when i was at market one of the freebies that was a market freebie for a uh, sweet wing uh studio uh, my friend susan o'brien was no rain no flowers and i asked susan i said hey can I take an extra one and give one to my audience? And she said, absolutely, you can do that, Shelly. So she gave me an extra one. And so if you would like no rain, no flowers, then please use in your comment the word flowers, flowers. 
And then I got two of these, one for me, one for you before I left because spring is on the way. And I thought this would be perfect. This is Brenda Gervais, Tis Spring. Isn't that just adorable? I got one for you and one for me. And if you would like Tis Spring, use the word spring. So you got flowers, you got spring, and now look at this. I got two of every single one of the animal crackers that were at market from Stacy Nash. So, uh, so if you would like these, there will be two winners for each of these categories. This is Bobbin. And that is your call word. If you would like the Stacy Nash bobbin pattern, use the word bobbin and it's B-O-B-B-I-N. B-O-B-B-I-N. And two people will be, uh, lucky winners will get one of these. And then we have Miss Hazel, the little squirrel. I am in love with her. And the key word for this is Hazel. And then two people can um, win Miss Hazel. I want to show you the back. This is what how the back is. I need to show you Bobbin as well. Oh, they don't have it back there. Okay, never mind. Okay, so if you want Miss Hazel, use Hazel, H-A-Z-E-L. Bobbin is Bobbin. And then we have little Miss Maggie May. I love her little dress and her little radish pin keep. And there's two of them. Two of you can win. And you need to use the word Maggie. And the way you spell Maggie is M-A-G-G-I-E. Maggie. M-A-G-G-I-E. This is the back. Isn't that adorable? So if you would like to be the winner of those, use those call words. And, uh, and it, you can, do, I love your wonderful sentences that y'all put together. They are so neat, but you don't have to do that. You can just use the words, make sure you spell them correctly. That way it goes right into the random comment picker, um, correctly. And, um, I hope you enjoyed today. I enjoyed today. Actually, I missed you terribly. Um, I missed talking to you. Um, and, uh, that was a long three weeks, friends. Um, I will say I'm so happy for the Facebook group, um, because I get to interact with you even more. And, um, it, you guys are just wonderful. I just love my stitching friends. I love my community as much as I love my my stitching and I hope you all know that um, I've enjoyed so much uh, the activity in the group the zoom was so fun if you'd like to be a part of that Facebook group please go to Facebook look up antique needle workers circle of friends and answer the questions and you will gain entrance if you did want to be um, part of the giveaways, do use the words, but you also need to like and subscribe. Something that um, happened with someone and they actually got back with me is, um, I guess they double checked and they clicked subscribed and they unsubscribed theirself because they said, I went to make sure and I wasn't subscribed, but I went and hit the button. So I was already subscribed. So make sure you look at that button really quick. I mean, do make sure that you like and subscribe and comment, um, but make sure you don't unsubscribe yourself either. So I, I'm so sorry for my friend that had that happen to them, but you just double check it, make sure that you just didn't unsubscribe yourself. So, but do be 18, like and subscribe to be part of the giveaway. Uh, I, it's been a joy to be with you. I've missed you. I hope that you learned something. I hope you enjoyed something you saw. And I especially hope that you were inspired today. And um, I'll see you again in two weeks. And until I do, I wish you many happy stitches. Bye-bye, my friends. Uh -huh.